The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or when you use our code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Sarah. We're two moms with eight kids between us from preschool to teen. This is the show where we help you feel better about the mom you are and share our own parenting tips and personal stories. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Mom Hour. I'm Sarah Powers, and you are listening to one of our monthly interview episodes on the Mom Hour Voices series. Today, I'm going to be talking with my good friend, Christine Ko, who is co-author of the book Minimalist Parenting, co-host of the amazing Edit Your Life podcast, and also co-founder of the activist apparel line Brave New World Designs, which we're going to talk a lot about. She's also an amazing entrepreneur, a genuine people connector, and we both have daughters named Violet, which is really fun. So if you've ever been curious what it's like to own an Etsy shop or launch an apparel line or really any kind of a physical product line, you're going to love this conversation. Christine and I get into the nitty gritty details, which I think a lot of people are curious about. And it's a really fun conversation. We are welcoming our longtime sponsor, Prep Dish, back to the show today. And listeners, if you're looking to boost your protein intake, Prep Dish is making it so easy right now. When you sign up in January, you'll get access to a month's worth of the new Prep Dish protein boost meal plans. I love this, Sarah. Protein is so important for our health. It helps support mental clarity, sleep, energy, hormone balance, and more. And as busy moms, we're often not getting enough protein, especially at breakfast. With these meal plans from Prep Dish, you'll learn how to quickly prep four protein-rich dinners and one breakfast. Right. And like all Prep Dish meal plans, they make it so simple to shop once, prep for the week ahead of time, and save time on busy weeknights by having your meals ready to heat and serve. And Megan, these meals sound so delicious and perfect for January. Listen to this. Slow cooker carnitas bowls, stuffed pepper soup, and then there's a Swiss chard mushroom and goat cheese frittata for breakfast. Okay, I am adding that stuffed pepper soup to my rotation ASAP. This is a limited time offer, so make sure to sign up before the end of January to get your free bonus meal plans. To learn more and sign up now, visit prepdish.com slash themomhour. Again, that's prepdish.com slash the mom hour for a month's worth of the new prep dish protein boost meal plans. Check it out. Sarah, you know, when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies, but having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product the algorithm sends my way. You know, what's not too good to be true though. Our sponsor ritual and their clinically backed essential for women, 18 plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh minty essence in every bottle. So you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients, and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. Okay, everyone, here's my conversation with Christine Co. And be sure to check out the show notes at themomhour.com for links to everything you hear us discuss in the interview. Thanks for listening. Hi, Christine Co. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Oh, my goodness, Sarah Powers. Hello. I am so excited to be here. Uh, first of all, I feel like you should have been here already, but I guess that's better late than never. Maybe, maybe in our dreams it already happened, yeah. but I, you know, I'm just thrilled. 
<laughs> Me too. And I know we have a lot of listeners in common um, from our two podcasts. And that's always fun as a listener when you hear two podcast worlds colliding. So I know a lot of our listeners will be very excited. So I know this is like a law and order crossover episode. <laughs> it it or is something. totally, <laughs> it's totally a crossover episode. Um, okay. So I want to start talking about Brave New World Designs. Um, and I would love for you to just tell people who haven't been following along, what led you to found an apparel company, an activist apparel company. Um, what brought you there? Um, just this is a little bit different than the trajectory of the rest of your career. So will you just tell us about it? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, well, as you said, you know, I've been, I've, I'm an internet person and, uh, several years back, I actually did have a tangible design firm that was called Posh Peacock and I did print design. Um, and that was just something I had started a million years ago and then shattered it when I was sort of tired of doing it. But, um, really, you know, I had been making just these one-off t-shirts for my own amusement, mostly because I'm a font snob and, you know, I would see a shirt or I'd have an idea for a shirt and I'd say, Oh, I should put that on a t-shirt. And my husband, John, who is like Mr. Action guy about some things, he was like, just make your t-shirts, just make them and have a good time. And he literally ordered the equipment to like make it happen. And I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, okay. He's like, stop talking about it. Just do it. Which is not really typically his personality. Um, so anyway, I started making these shirts just for my own entertainment. And then every time I posted one, people would be like, where can I get that? And I'm like, I'm not selling anything. Um, and then enter the 2016 election. (laughs) Right. And um, I had a lot of feelings about it. And um, as John and I were kind of sitting there trying to figure out what to do with those feelings, we sa- we thought to ourselves, well, well, why don't we, people seem to like these shirts and they already have a sort of activist or silly or fun bend to it. You know, why don't we start a company and then donate part of the proceeds um, to different organizations? And literally in two weeks, we, from the idea of having the thing... <laughs> to right. launching the thing it was two weeks which was insane that's insane. i'm not sure i would recommend that in general but <laughs> so let me back up to the point at which john ordered the equipment and at that point it was totally just fun and a hobby and you have a great yep. you have a great wit and sense of humor and you had the design and i think you and i i think are alike in a lot of ways and i can get hung up too on like well then i'd have to research the right piece of equipment and like where would i put it and i don't have an outlet in the right part of the wall or whatever so when, <laughs> when he did that was it still a hobby or had had the had the interest in people purchasing kind of reached a point where it made sense oh no it was still a hobby for sure okay. but he just you know he's he's such a great guy and he just um when he sees my creative wheels churning like he he wants to support it and yeah, so it's so cool to have that kind of counterbalance so what yeah. what is the equipment i like what i need to like picture something tangible yeah what? well so it's like a professional heat press like you okay. literally like crank heat it up to a million degrees and then okay. crank a ha- handle down but then like once i figured out okay this heat press is on the way now what um you know there were all these other things i had to figure out like okay, how do I get the design for my head into a vector graphic that I knew how to do through okay. Illustrator? Okay. Um, and then, okay, now I have to cut vinyl. How do I do that? So there were like, there yeah. were so many steps. It was insane, but I also like figuring stuff out. So I right. didn't mind it terribly. So your setup, I think I've heard you say it's in your basement. So, it is. And so it's a, it's a, the heat press. And then do you have like a vinyl cutter? I'm asking all the technical questions. Yeah, but I like yeah, to picture have- how this works. Yeah, well, so all the actual like design magic happens in my studio upstairs. Um, And so that's where I have my cutter and all my rolls of vinyl and everything. And then down in the basement is where production happens because um, we actually have two presses um, because John's like, we need a backup in case the first one dies. I'm like, oh, I guess that's smart. (laughs) Um, And then we've got lots of shelves which hold all of our shirt inventory um and it's we have a very like new construction not scary basement so it's right. actually very nice down there right very nice um and yeah part of the reason i'm picking at the details is i i think there's a lot of listeners out there who are very curious about what it takes to start like to make a physical product or to start an etsy shop or to start some kind of a manufacturing because it feels so uh daunting if you don't know so i think it's mm-hmm. i think it's really interesting to hear about um how did you find the actual t-shirt, like the actual apparel to press the designs onto? Yeah. I mean, well, you've been such a kind client. So like, I I know you have a lot of shirts. I do. I am a regular customer. (laughs) Yeah. um, But so basically, you know, I started looking around at 
um, you know, places where you can get lots of blanks and mm-hmm. ordered a million <laughs> of different styles and sizes. And, um, you know, just kind of went, went at it from there. And, we, you know, we wanted something that like felt good and was yeah. soft, but would hold up like originally, this is such a little detail, but, um, since you seem to be into I, that, into like it. originally I was like, oh, of course it has to be hundred percent cotton because right. just because, that um, seems like a thing. Yeah. It seems like a thing. Um, but a lot of the 100% cotton was really scratchy and I didn't like it. And then um, John had a shirt that was a, you know, a mixed blend, you know, of we use Next Level, which is actually a, based out of California. And we like okay. that they have like good, good, you know, practices and how they run their business. Um, right. And so I was like, oh, this one feels really good. And so that's, we basically, it was trial and error. Lots yeah. of, we have lots of extra shirts well, hanging around I, that I didn't know make people, the cut. <laughs> I know people can relate because I feel like, you know, slogan tees and graphic tees are very in right now, but everybody can relate to having a t-shirt that the design looks great, but the it's not soft or it's like yeah. a boxy fit. Do you know what I mean? Where it's yeah. like, it seems like it just was mass manufactured. So, and my husband has the men's, a couple of the men's styles, as you know, and he is a t-shirt guy. Like he like, he just likes t-shirts and he's picky. And then, um, Allegra, my oldest and I both have the women's styles and they are, they're really like a, a stretchy, but firm Jersey. Like it's just a good fit and long enough. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm so glad that just when I heard actually your very sweet podcast, when you mentioned, um, us like I it made me happy because another thing we had been kind of lamenting over was oh well if we did unisex that would be easier for inventory but you know like unisex tees they're like these big boxes right (laughs) right no (laughs) wasn't gonna happen (laughs) it's a it's a it's a great quality so okay so when you talked about that two weeks from like deciding you were gonna do this to being up and running um how much of that was did you have um past experience working as an Etsy seller, like in any of your other, with your design company? Well, very, very minor. So when I had my, my paper design company, um, I just had my own website and, um, that was fine. But when we went, went at it this time around, and it was really sort of fascinating to have that experience behind me because I was like, well, I don't mind setting up a website, but you know, for discovery, I just liked the idea of being on Etsy. You yeah. know, it, it's people are already going there. They know how to use it. Yep. I liked the idea of being in a place where other, you know, indie artists. Yeah. It's like, it feels were. like a community yeah. aspect kind of. Yeah. So that was an intentional, like mostly for discovery and community. Uh-huh. We decided to, to launch it there. And was there a lot of learning that happened there or is it pretty, is Etsy pretty intuitive? I have to, you know, give super high fives to Etsy because they do make it, I mean, you, you need to know how to like, you know, you need to take product shots and you need to do all manner of things, but like they really make it easy the way they integrate shipping and all this other stuff. So I'm, I think they're awesome and I'm, I'm a huge fan of their work. Awesome. That's awesome. Um, okay. So I want to talk a little bit maybe about the differences between having a physical product that you hold in your hands and ship out to people. Has that felt in any way kind of fundamentally different from, uh, you know, our listeners who know you and those who listen to me introduce you at the beginning of the show. I mean, you're a prolific blogger, writer, you've done video content, you come from a background of academia. So there's so much that you have done that isn't quite as physical, tangible. Um, Mm -hmm. Did it feel different? I'm curious if the creative process felt different, if the satisfaction is different or just what was different about it? Yeah, it's been really different. Well, first, my mom understands what the heck I do now. <laughs> right, like, <laughs> like, she makes t-shirts. <laughs> well, and she used to just call me a child psychologist because she didn't even understand the whole like music and brain neuroscience right. thing. She so was like, oh, my daughter. Past, even in yeah. your past career, it was too hard. Yeah. Nobody ever understood what I did. But um, um, so, yeah, like that, there was that. But, you know, two things have been notable in my mind. Um, and I think one will really resonate with, with your, you know, community, which is that, you know, for my kids, it's been this tangible thing that they understand and that they help with. We actually, um, they love being in the workshop with us, which we actually have like two big, you know, desks or not desks, but like table type things where, um, we'll just set up and during when things get really busy, um, they'll help us, you know, love it. (laughs) And it's awesome. And we pay them, you know, we, it's like, it's a very tangible thing and they, and they love it. They have a whiteboard downstairs where they log their hours. It's really, really cute. cute. Um, but the other thing that, you know, because I'm just a people person and a community person, it has been 
so moving to me for people to share their photos yeah. um, of them in their shirts. Um, like I, I like cried when I saw the one of you and Allegra in your like twinning shirts. Yeah. And they're just, there've been so many and we try to post a lot of them on Instagram um, and keep up with it that way. But it's just been, you know, just moving and stories from all over, yeah. you know, um, which has been so, so wonderful. Well, I, that's a great segue because we haven't really talked about the activist uh, aspect of this yet. I mean, you mentioned that that was really kind of the impetus uh, post-election. Um, but I can see how those, I mean, people are coming here and in a lot of times making a purchase um, either directly to support a cause or because they feel like the message is somehow tied to something really important to them. So that's a big piece of this. Um, maybe can you just talk about a little bit about the kind of cross-section of how you felt like this was an act of activism and at the same time it's a business and it's creativity and that's kind of magical in a way. You know, it has been so interesting. Um, it is, it is the whole process has given me a real insight and appreciation for how challenging like retail and retail predictions yeah. must be. Um, yeah. you know, for us, we, we are just really following our nose, um, with stuff you know, where we have a feeling about it, um, where we have a feeling about it and also a design, you know, a creative idea that, you know, weaves into it. Sure. So, um, but I think that the reason that it's, it's really taken off is because it's just been the right time and it really has touched a nerve with people and how mm -hmm. they're feeling and how they want, you know, their lives to be and their mm -hmm. kids' lives to be. Yeah. So the collection I think has, um, Actually, I'm not exactly sure how many designs we have, but we have supported um, over 25 different nonprofit organizations just, you know, spanning all manner of causes, whether it's family related or women's health or the environment or kids and music or teachers um, and have raised, you know, a lot of money, thousands yeah. of dollars um, over the last while. So that's been awesome. We we're just really proud so of it. So cool. So does I'm curious if the design idea sometimes comes first and then you look for the the organization or the cause that seems like a fit or does a cause and a cause come to you and then you design something or is it has it worked both ways? Um, it's worked both ways. Mostly. Uh, a lot of the times we've been responding to something in the news. Sure. Um, so the thing happens first and then we do a lot of research into what organization to support. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a balance of like, okay, does it, does it have solid ratings on charity navigator? Does right. it, um, is it too big? Like, do we want to support something smaller that need, right. really, really needs our help? You know, we put a lot of thought into those elements of it. And, and what's that like when you reach out and contact them? Like it, it's, I don't even know how that works as I guess you're donating, you're donating proceeds from a business to them. You're not donating just as an individual, but do you get to sort of talk to people at those organizations? Uh, mostly no, actually, <laughs> you know, mostly we just, we actually, we never, um, we never email an organization and say, Hey, we're doing this. We just tag them on social. Right. Yeah. And, um, um, we had one organization that reached out to us when they were like, oh my gosh, like, how did this happen? And right. it was great. We had, then we had a conversation and I told them why, you know, we were committed to them. And, um, so it, it's been, you know, great just to support smaller places as well as larger. That's really cool. I bet you've probably had, um, you know, fans of yours probably suggest some and I mean, feel like they can contribute ideas. And it feels like, at least from where I stand, it feels like, such a grassroots thing that it, it feels like something that you could make a suggestion or, you know, be a part of in some way. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. And, you know, we've got some, I have some ideas, you know, that are sort of in the hopper that, right. um, you know, we kind of go through waves of like, I mean, cause the reality is, you know, John is, he's a therapist with an independent practice and I, you know, have to touch five businesses a day. Right. Like we're both right. pretty busy. So right. I feel like we do go in like waves of how busy, how sure. active we are in it, but it's, it's something we do touch every day. Yeah. I love that. Well, actually my next question was going to be a little more about what it's like to have this business as your family. You talked about the girls being, you know, contributing, um, and how has it been with you and John? Like have, has, have the roles sort of naturally come to each of you of who's handling what has it been fun? Like how, how has that played out? Yeah. I, I mean, I would say like with anything, there were a few bumps to work uh -huh. out at the beginning. Cause I'm a very, I mean, you know me, I'm like, well, I think you and I are a lot of light yeah, alike. We so. get an idea and we hammer out the plan and then we go. Yeah. Um, and he is more of a, like sit with his thoughts and kind of figure it out. But, right. um, well, and the other difference is that he 
really is not into social media. So. Right. Interesting. <laughs> um, so he tends to be more of like the sort of more of the silent partner. He's he, you know, does all the business side. He does all the calculations, which I can't even like bear to look at. Um, he he takes care of all that stuff. And then I'm definitely more of the like, you know, the designer and then the front facing person on social media. But it's been awesome. Like we it gives us, you know, we'll go for a walk and we'll brainstorm ideas. And yeah, it's been really, really fun to work with. Him yeah, on. that's I, that's kind of what I was picturing is that you don't have to have office hours when it's something that's sort of like a labor of love and something creative that you're both loving. You can talk about it, you know, over, like you said, on a walk or just in your quote unquote family personal time, because it's something you're all involved in, which I mm-hmm, think is so cool. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people, I think there's a lot of people who you know, wonder what this kind of thing would be like. And it's really cool to hear about. So I love it. Well, Megan, I've been wearing Vionic shoes for over three years now, but this month, my trusted shoe brand and I entered a new phase of our relationship, international travel. Well, Sarah, that is a serious commitment, (laughs) right? You can't just pack any shoe for a trip abroad. It's got to be stylish enough for those major cosmopolitan cities. It's got to be sturdy enough for trains, planes, buses, and city streets. And obviously, it's got to be comfortable enough to support your feet over many, many miles of walking. Well, no surprise, my Vionics were up to the task. I had two pair with me, a pair of casual sneakers in a cool gray color, and then a weatherproof suede ankle boot that I swear still looks brand new after 10 days on soggy sidewalks. Megan, the only time my feet hurt the entire trip was New Year's Eve when I made the mistake of wearing a pair of booties not from Vionic. So I'll just leave that data right here for you. Okay, well, that's pretty conclusive, Sarah. Vionic has the best curated styles to get you ready for whatever 2024 has in store, whether it's jet setting like Sarah or keeping up with busy mom life on this side of the pond. They even offer a 30-day guarantee. Wear them, love them, or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. Use code THEMOMHOUR15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's a one-time use only. Bionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Sarah, when my kids were little, I was always pretty torn on whether to give them a daily multivitamin. I knew that modern kids' diets have some pretty big nutritional gaps, but I also knew that most children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with sugar, they have all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them, and I was like, why would I give these to my kids? Luckily, two dads recognized the problem and came up with a solution, Haya, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Your first shipment comes with a cute bottle that has fun stickers your kids can use to decorate it too. My kids always loved that. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash MomHour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Okay, I am back with Christine Co. We've been talking about Brave New World Designs. And um, Christine, I got to watch as some really fun things happened with your business. When was this? Can you remind, you know, I'm going to ask you oh about when Whoopi Goldberg <laughs> wore the Maxine Waters t-shirt. So that, well, that's where we're going with this. But remind me how long ago that was. Okay, so it, things really got crazy. So we started this... Um, November of 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, like it was right around Giving Tuesday, right after the election. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, and it we hit the holidays and it was lovely and all that good stuff. And we were just kind of expecting it to burble along. Mm-hmm. Um, and then things really went crazy between March to May of 2017. Okay. Right. Because I would have seen you at Mom 2.0 and it, a lot of it was happening a lot of it right happened then. then. Like yeah. while, yes, while we were while we were all together. Um, so what happened first? I, in my notes here, I wrote down that there was a, a um, I think in style magazine, was that the magazine or L 
one of the magazines. Uh, yeah. Well, so I should back up and say yeah. that um, I don't know if you've ever talked. Well, I'm sure you've talked about Mom 2 Summit and you just mentioned uh-huh. it. But yes. And I don't know if you've talked with Laura Mays, who is one of the founders. But I was joking with Laura that I sort of blame her or not blame, but I think she is like this weird little spark where things happen when I'm around her. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> because the first um, pop of crazy happened at um, she at the time it was March last year, uh-huh. and she had organized this new conference called the B Conference, mm-hmm. and it was bringing together women in entrepreneurism. And I was there, and you know that's when I got to do cool stuff like you know chat with Soledad O'Brien about my right. business <laughs> and stuff. But um, Lovey of awesomelylovey dot uh-huh. com, she and um, her book I'm Judging You um, posted a picture of. Uh, the Maxine of actually Lisa Stone wearing the Maxine Waters shirt. Okay. And all of a sudden we're at this conference in Austin and uh, my phone and John's phone starts blowing up with orders. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I'm not kidding, like, like a hundred orders in like an hour. <laughs> right. And, and, and meanwhile, I actually get trapped in Austin in a blizzard because there's a blizzard in Boston and like everything is exploding at home. Oh my but gosh. Um, does that, did it, does that feel like really exciting or like slightly panic inducing? It was both. It was both. And it was kind of like, like I was literally like, okay, uh, John, you need to like go count how many (laughs) shirts we have and then like see what the difference is and tell me and I'll order more. (laughs) Like we were not prepared. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Uh, But we worked really hard and got all those orders out like within a week, which was amazing. amazing. Um, So that was like the first wave. And then it was, you know, I have to say I was almost a little embarrassed that so many so many incredible things were all happening at the same time. But I, you know, our good friend, mutual friend, Jess Ashley said, you know, if you were some, I hope this isn't offensive, but she was like, if you were some like mediocre white dude, you'd be like pumping your fists and be like, Hey, look at how awesome I am. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so she's like, you've got a rebel in it, but yeah, like, um, uh, while at mom Two, um, in style, uh, picked up the shirt. Yes, um, I remember that. Whoopi Goldberg wore the shirt. That was a, a big one. Like on the view. Yeah. And then not long after that, Alyssa Milano tweeted a picture of herself in the shirt. And right. I was like, oh, I don't recall seeing her name. She must have had an assistant over. Her. Right. Right. <laughs> um, so it was it was crazy. It was really, really crazy. And I assume it continued to translate into waves of orders, right? I mean, just it was it was months. I mean, it yeah. was really like the tail on all of that was really, really crazy. Yeah. Um, I, I had not, ex- you know, expected that at all. And it's it's pretty awesome because the shirt that really took off was this shirt of Maxine Waters, uh-huh. who, you know, she's yes. a rep from California. And it was again, when you were talking about like, does a design come to you or does a thing come to you? Like when I first had the idea for that shirt, I told John about it and he was like, girl, that's weird. Like, uh, like, <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm into that. And I was like, well, I just, I'm so into her because yeah. I've read about her from our Eric Thomas and, you know, this will just be a little funny, quirky shirt that I'll just make and it'll be art and I'll love it. Right. And it's and, almost like well, the people who get it will get it and the people who don't, it doesn't matter. And most, yeah. And mostly nobody else will get it. And so I, I literally thought like maybe five people would buy that shirt. And that is our number one bestseller. And yeah. it's it's great because it benefits Emily's List, which okay, um, I was going to ask. I couldn't remember which one. That yeah. Benefited. Yeah. Which um, trains women to run for office. So oh, it's so we've been able to like shove a ton of money their way. And that's been really awesome. That is, that is truly amazing. Well, that was, I mean, as a friend and, you know, person working in the same space, like I think everyone was just rooting for you. I mean, there's something about like, there's something that seems sort of disingenuous about trying to go viral, but when, (laughs) when something just magically hits like that, um, I don't know, it just, it felt very celebratory. And I think you should, like Jess said, I think you should just own it. It was very, very exciting. Um, and yeah, I was going to ask if there's been any other, any other designs that have kind of started to pop up in that same way, or is Maxine, she's just the it girl. Maxine's definitely the big one. I mean, we, we've sold, you know, a lot of people have, um, worn the smash the patriarchy Mm -hmm. one, which supports Planned Parenthood. That was Mm -hmm. actually one of the very first ones that I made just for me. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, there, but nothing has, nothing has come close to Maxine yet. I love we'll, the one, who, we'll, who knows? We'll see. Right. <laughs> I, um, we have a lot of listeners who are teachers and I love the one that you did. Can you remind me the one that you did for yeah, teachers? Yeah. It's, um, it says teacher hero and in the hero like reverses the letters and there's an apple inside mm-hmm. the, yeah, the it's o. a really cool. Design. Yeah. And it benefits teach for America. Okay. And, um, it was so cute. Like one advise, um, 
Violet's she's in first grade and her teacher like walked out walked out wearing the shirt the oh. other day at school and it's just it's it's really really sweet I mean talk about like we all we all kind of roll our eyes at the obligation of teacher gifts especially when it gets to be the same stuff every year but to to give a gift that also supports a cause and supports a small business owner I mean I think that's why this is so compelling to people because there's so many layers of wanting to you know, support a small business that's also supporting great causes and is cool designs. It's just, it's a win. It's been um, fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll link up that to the te- We'll link up all of this in the show notes, but um, that teacher one popped to mind because that, that was another really cool one. Um, so I was going to ask you if you have any advice for moms, especially at home moms or moms who are freelancing, who are a little daunted by the idea of starting an actual merchandise or apparel Etsy shop. Is there anything you'd tell, tell those people having yeah, experienced what you have? Sure. I mean, I would, th- I say, I think the first thing is, um, just to start and to not be too intimidated mm-hmm. by, um, feelings about what you perhaps should be doing or need to be doing. Like for example, and what I mean specifically is, I think when you go to Etsy, you know, the photos are always so beautiful and Mm -hmm. it's always like a little intimidating. Like, how am I going to style all this? You know, if you go to our shop, it's very simple. All of the photos, most of them are me (laughs) in the shirt with my head completely cut off, but with the photos just taken on my phone. Right. You know, like no special tripod, no special equipment. Sometimes Laurel's taking the photo for me. I mean, it's really, really simple. Um, And then I think that, you know, to just try to be good in the space and, you know, you can mm-hmm. tell people about it and support other people's work. And I think, you know, that's, that's a really important thing, but yeah. I, I always tell people like, just start, you know, yeah. just, just try one little thing and you can always iterate and yeah. you can evolve and change direction right. and adjust course. So right. that would be my advice. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's great advice. Is there anything you kind of learned the hard way that if you did it again, you could have been more prepared or just, you know, been yeah been more prepared for um i don't think there was i think the the hardest thing has been um you know it's nothing new but it's every now and then you know you have to deal with creative theft yeah <laughs> and yes. and it's not hard or surprising it's just a bummer yeah. and um you know that is one area where i so value um the community and you know my friends in the space like you who um, you know, if I post about something like that has happened with that, people like jump in and help. And I'm, yeah. I'm just really grateful for that. But yeah. I think that is one thing, you know, you need to be mindful of as yeah. you develop your work is just, you know, you kind of have to like get your skin ready to be yes. tough and, and to yeah. deal with that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and educate yourself probably about, especially for small, uh, designers and people just starting out, um, not even aware that how rampant that kind of, you know, intellectual property and creative theft Mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just sort of, it's easy to be naive in the beginning because you might be small enough that nobody's had the opportunity to steal your good stuff. So it's with that growth comes that unfortunate side, Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, Okay. Well, let's shift gears a little bit because I don't want to, I don't want to leave this conversation without talking about the other amazing things that you do. So a lot of our listeners listen to the Edit Your Life podcast, but not all of them. So let's talk really quickly about how you and Asha are doing and maybe just tell everybody a little bit about that show, what you guys are doing lately, how it's evolved. Sure. Well, you know, you guys, I don't mean to put you on the spot and embarrass you, but you know, you and Megan have just been, um, just such a wonderful beacon for us as we started that Aww. journey. I, I forget exactly how far ahead, you know, how many months you had already been running. I mean, but- it was right at the same time. Well, actually, I have a funny tie in that you may not know, but you, Asha went to the Mom 2.0 where my good friends, Erica and Kelsey from the Girl Next Door podcast did yes. that. So, and Asha has been very generous. And every time you guys talk about that, I make sure Kelsey hears it but I have since become quite good friends with both of them and that is a that was an Arizona connection for me so I'm not taking credit for it that's not what I'm trying to say but I I was listening to their podcast and following them before Megan and I even started ours and then I know they kind of helped launch a couple of shows yours and Jess and KJ's so it is a it's a quite a small podcasting world I guess is my point sure. and we were all yeah. getting into it around the same time so yeah yeah no she had gone I wasn't at that mom too but she went to their their session and took notes and um you know we had written a book called minimalist parenting in uh goodness I think it was 2013 that it was published and we just 
we loved it. You know, we had such a great time working on it together and just really believed in, in this reality that as parents, you know, we can carve out the way we want to do things and we don't need to just be subject to, you know, whatever the whims and tide of, of like modern parenting is. Um, so, you know, I was, I'm like a puppy dog with a new project. So like literally like months after we finished the book, I'm like, okay, okay, what's next? What are we going to do next? And, um, so I had the idea for edit your life and I really wanted to expand it to just general lifestyle. So we still do tons of parenting, but lots of other stuff, you know, productivity and decluttering and whatever Mm -hmm. else. And, um, it's just such a joy, you know, I'm, I'm sure you have this, you know, with Megan, but it's like, yeah, I can hear it, you know, when you guys talk on your show, but I just, I love talking to her and I love talking, you know, communicating with our community and hearing from them what they want and, it's it's just been such a joy. Well, I almost want to relate it back to what we talked about with a, a physical product versus a purely digital one. And podcasting, I think, sort of satisfies something in a lot of writers and bloggers that feels like it's using your ideas and your voice in a different way. It's not a physical product. It's still coming over the internet, but we are talking with our voices as opposed to typing with our fingers. And there's something, whether it's the novelty or just the way Megan and I talk all the time about how we were much more careful as writers and bloggers in the parenting space than we are on our podcast. And I don't think that's an accident. I think it's just the medium of podcasting is a conversation. And we've always said that blogging is a conversation, but this is like an actual conversation. And I it think is that's, literally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there, I know, there is yeah. a freedom to it. Yes. Which I, I just love. Yes. I, I love it too. So um, anything you guys have coming up or any topics you've covered recently that have been really fun? Cause you're over a hundred episodes too. So you're in the, Oh, I know you're in the granny club. Like we, oh are, my you gosh, we thinking, are totally, it's hard. you have to keep thinking of new ideas or keep, you know, it's, that's the, the privilege I guess crazy. that comes with having been around for a while. Yeah. Well, so, um, yeah, so we're over a hundred, uh, we, we have a little project we're working on, but I can't like say okay. anything yet All about right. it, but, um, I guess, I don't know. I, we've, we just, um, I had a couple interviews recently that I just loved. One was, was with Jess Leahy, who, you know, I to um, that. Yes, and, and I that it one. was called, um, untangling over parenting and, it's, it's a such, she's so smart. I mean, yes. don't even listen to it for me, but listen to it for her yes, because she's, she's so amazing. great. Yeah. Um, you know, people always love when we do a good old fashioned decluttering kind mm-hmm. of episode. So I, I did an interview with, um, Rachel Rosenthal, um, called decluttering for normal people. Nice. <laughs> and yeah. And Asha, we have a one coming up where Asha and I talk about like, you know, favorite cookbooks that we're using. It oh, can I really run, that. run the gamut. Yes. So yeah. yes. Well, it's a great listen for our listeners who have not listened to the Edit Your Life show. We will, of course, link that up. You guys are weekly as well, right? We are, yeah. Show a week, yeah. Awesome. Well, and then let's talk about Boston Mamas because you still you still have a blog as if it's, you know, something to still have. But so in, in, our, in our industry, not everybody does still have a blog. So I've always been interested in your blog because in the very beginning of my writing and blogging days, I was managing editor for a local mom's blog. Yes, I remember. um, What I love about Boston Mamas is that you really, the content is equally for parents in the Boston area, but also plenty of general interest and national interest stuff. And I always, as an editor of a site like that, I always found that kind of hard. Like, wait, which are, Mm -hmm. you know, which are we? Um, But I think you've done both really well. So is it, um, is it still fun? Is it? I need to hire you to talk about me. You're so nice. Um, (laughs) It it has it is really fun. I mean, I can't. It's been eleven years yeah, since I, was I started ask. that site. I mean, oh my gosh, I'm so old. Like, just I'm like the granny in all corners. But I but, saw you just did a site redesign. I mean, these are it's it's great. Is there still a need? There are still moms in Boston and yeah. everywhere who need your content. That's the that's the great part. Yeah, and you know, when I started it eleven years ago, it still fills the vision that I had. In that, you know, when I started it, I was looking for. Actually, this is another thing I would recommend to you know other moms who are looking to start something, mm-hmm. and that is, you know, to look for a hole, mm-hmm. um, and it and something that you feel excited about, and you know, a hole that you want to fill. Like at that time, there were calendar sites which were very helpful, but I mm-hmm. definitely did not want to do that. Right. Um, like things I, to do this month yeah, in Boston yeah. with kids. Yeah. I, I wanted to, I wanted to do some of that, but not right. just be a calendar site. And I was like, you know, there isn't like a lifestyle site, you know, in this city that can hit on, you know, it can hit on style or it could hit on events or it could do food or whatever. And so I was like, all right, let's give it a whirl. And, you know, the response is 
you know, very strong and it's, it's been really great. And, um, so yeah, it's, it's still going strong. And I, you know, have three women who I hire regularly who are, you know, regular on my staff as assistants. And that's been awesome. And, you know, various contributing writers. So it's still a thing. There's something really, um, I think grounding about knowing what's happening in your community. So we moved from Arizona to Southern California three and a half years ago. And that was kind of right when podcasting and my stuff with Megan was taking off. So I, I had a lot of connections in the blogosphere and had gone from having local, cause I did write for a local mom's blog and I was editor for, so I knew I was tapped into that scene and three and a half years in, I'm still really not in orange County. And every once in a while I'll think, I don't even know not only do I know what not what, know what's going on sometimes as a parent to do with my own kids, but I'm also not connected to those local writers, the local media outlets. Mm. I just think I think that's a really fun way. And Megan and I have done podcast episodes where on you know if you want to start as a writer or a blogger, I think thinking local can be a really fulfilling way um, to experience writing and blogging. So I, I mean, I don't know. I just think there's a, there's a huge need for that. And it, I, I would imagine it's fun for you because you do travel a lot for work and you have clients and people all over the country, but there's, then there's Boston and you know, there's that community as well. So I think that's awesome. Yeah. And it's been, it was funny because I remember like way back when I was going to start the site and I didn't even know what a blog was. I just had an idea for what I wanted. And a tech friend said, Oh, that that's a blog. Um, but I remember getting advice from some tech people who were like, Oh, you know, don't make it, don't make it Boston. You'll be pigeonholed in. And, and I, part of me was like, yeah, I do worry about that a little, but it's been so great. And, you know, it was really one of the first hyper local sites in the country. And then they all started like popping up like right after that. So no, it's, I think, I think it fills a need for sure. And I think it's awesome that yours is still there. So it's bostonmamas.com. Yep. Right. And so, yeah, we are going to start to wrap up, but everything that we talked about, including brave new world's designs is the best place to send people for that. The Etsy shop. Is that easiest? Uh, Oh yeah. I mean, if you go to, Yeah. If you go to brave new world designs.com, you can punt over. So, right. you know, it's, it's Perfect. easy enough to find. Yeah. And you guys are on Instagram as well. It's really fun. Like you said, to see people's, the, the t-shirts making it out into the world. In all yeah. That's my favorite. Ways. It's just yeah. seeing other people in them. I love it. I agree. Well, Christine, this has been really fun. Um, I'm so glad to have you here and, um, listeners, everything we talked about will be at the momhour.com. This is part of our voices interview series. That's number 22 in that series. So look for that. And yeah, Christine, I can't wait to see you in person, hopefully in a couple months. And thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. And, you know, thanks to you and Megan for all you do for so many moms. I I know that this is a connection point for so many and it's really wonderful. Thank you. All right. Talk to you later. Take care. The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like Chatbooks. Chatbooks makes it beyond easy to create beautiful photo books by importing your digital photos from anywhere, Instagram, Facebook, Google Photos, or directly from your phone. The books come in a variety of sizes with beautiful cover options and binding styles to choose from, and they start at just $15. Plus, we have a great deal just for our listeners. Use code THEMOMHOUR20 to save 20% off your purchase. Just download the Chatbooks app and use code THEMOMHOUR20 to save 20%. The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or use code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash the mom hour.